It's bare root season in Hawaii and on most of the west coast of the United States or in other milder areas, maybe the Gulf Coast too. Um, bare root season is the time of year when you can buy most of the deciduous fruits, whether it's grapes, berries, apples, cherries, peaches, plums, nectarines, um, on and on, you know, Asian pears, persimmons, whatever. Uh, it's the time of year that if the tree you're buying is one that will lose leaves in the wintertime, like this apple right here, well then you can buy them bare root. And that is absolutely the best way that you can buy a deciduous fruit tree. Do not be afraid of bare root. Because anytime you buy, say, a potted apple or a potted pear or a potted cherry, you're buying a bare root tree because the growers are buying these bare root trees off a bunch of people who raise them in California or in Oregon and spots. They're bringing them into the nurseries, they're sticking them in pots and they're throwing potting soil around them and they're letting them root in and then reselling them later on in the year during the spring when there's leaves on the plants. Um, and so there is no advantage to buying that tree in the container. You will pay more to get it and you also might have Maybe a tree that's been in that pot for a year so that it's circling, it's root bound. The soil around the bottom of the tree, depending on what type it is, can also create a soil interface condition in your yard. That is, that the soil may be so dissimilar to what your yard has that the two just don't work well together. Now, on the other hand, this thing here, this is a Dorset Golden. Dorset golden apple tree from the Bahamas. It's a low chill tree, well maybe even less than 200 hours or so. It's self-fertile. Uh, it's an excellent choice to try to grow here in Hawaii. And the reason that I'm going to be potting these apple trees instead of putting them directly in my field is that I have a friend of mine from California who owns property here in Hawaii and he won't be back till March so he won't be around for the bare root season and so I am going to pot the trees for him so when he gets here he can have apple trees. All right. And so when it comes to uh, planting bare root trees, as I said, the best thing you can do is to actually put this thing right into the ground in your native soil with a little compost and fertilizer because then you don't have a soil interface condition. The soil around the roots is exactly the same soil that's in your yard and the tree operates perfectly. Okay, but again, my friend is going to have to get his in a container because there's really no other way. I can't hold these bare root. They'll begin leafing out. And if they leaf out, we have to have them in pots. Now, another thing about bare root fruit trees. I have seen people, when I've run nursery and sold bare root, go through the bins and go through the bins and look at the branches and try to decide, is this the perfect branch structure and so on. It's a waste of time, okay? Don't bother with it. The only things that are going to be really important on this tree are, was the trunk damaged when they dug it, and this one was not, is the graft good, it is a nice well healed graft, it looks fine, and is the root system okay. Well, this one's a little bit lopsided maybe, but other than that I see no problems with this root, okay. And so, as far as the branches up above, we're going to cut most of these off and in fact right now I'm going to start with all the branches that have been broken from the digging okay and so any branch here that was damaged it's coming off the tree yep and a lot of them they don't even appear damaged they actually are um, when you give them a push you'll see yeah, we get all kinds of stuff here oh I don't like the looks of this one at all Now, even if you don't have any broken branches, you still want to prune the tree because the roots have been damaged when they dug it. And you want to try to balance it out a little bit by removing some of the top of the tree because some of the root has been removed. That way the tree is a little bit more balanced and even. All right? Now, this one's got a scrape on it from the digger. Get rid of that too. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to look at this tree and honestly, most of the branches are either pointing towards you or they're in a flat plane here. We don't have too much coming this way. So the next thing we want to do is when we start to look at this, we say, all right, who's the lowest branch on the tree? All right. 
and we kind of try to figure out which branches are pointing what direction and so on and so forth. I'm going to take this one off because we have a good branch here pointing in that direction. All right. This one here, we have two branches right there pointing the same direction. I'm going to remove this lower one. The reason I'm going with the lower ones off is because Bruce has pigs and if he's got stuff too close to the ground on this tree, he's probably going to get it damaged anyway. So I'm kind of raising the tree up a little bit. Okay, next, we have one limb here, one limb here, and one limb there. One, two, three, four. four. There are four. One, two, three, four. All pretty much pointing the same direction here. And so, I want to spread them. And so I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to take that one off right there. Okay, not bad. Not too shabby. Now I have one here, one here opposing each other. One here and one here opposing each other. But this one is going to collide with this one anyway. So that's out of there. Now we're looking better. Now we're looking better. Okay. Okay. Now that pretty much spreads out... Um, pretty much spreads out the branching in the tree so things are fairly even. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these branches and I'm going to cut them to a bud just below the curve. The reason I'm doing that is so when the next shoot starts it comes out flatter. I don't want the branches going straight up. That is not a good thing. Okay, so we want them to flatten out. There we go. And good. Now we turn the tree over. Take a look underneath. Okay, that's a root system. It was soaked in water overnight. It's now drying out as I'm standing here and talking. But you can see there's breaks in the roots from cutting it. So I'm going to cut all of that nice and smooth and even. Get rid of the damaged pieces that are on there. doesn't hurt the plant to prune the roots. It's no more damaging than pruning the top of your apple tree. Don't worry about it. Okay. Ooh, there's a jagged one right there. Take that off. Uh, that's damaged right there. All right. There. I think I'm pretty happy. Oh, no, no. Got another bad, another broken one right there. Okay. Good. Yeah. There we go pruned root system and that root system will also fit into the pot. Now I've purchased pots for Bruce here that will fit these trees comfortably. This had quite a root system on it and it wasn't going to go into a five gallon bucket so we cut ourselves a ten. So the first tree was a Dorset Golden from the Bahamas, a low chill apple that uh, actually does fruit here in Mountain View. I have Dorset Golden in my garden and I have picked apples from it here in Hawaii and that's um, uh, right here. I have an Anna apple. Anna originates in Los Angeles. Um, this is a little bit smaller tree. Um, and so, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go across and I'm going to start cutting off all the damaged pieces on the tree from digging and shipping. You want nice, straight, clean, nice cuts. Uh, you don't want jagged, broken pieces of wood on your tree. Um, now, most of what I'm talking about here is potting the bare root. And you'll have various reasons why you want to pot bare root. Maybe you live in an apartment and you're growing the tree on your patio. Maybe your garden space isn't ready yet. There's a lot of reasons why. Maybe you're a nurseryman like I am and you're planning to sell these to somebody later on in containers because they will come. Uh, truly, I remember from uh, working in the nurseries uh, industry in California that there will be people who do not believe that the bare root tree is superior and do not know that the potted tree is the same as the bare root and also don't realize that the best time to plant these things is in the winter and so they'll show up in spring or summer in their shorts going where's your apple trees and I'll go well I got four varieties over there you know now in the bare root season we had 42 varieties right and only four in summer but it goes anyway uh, that looks like most of the branching there. Now this tree's a little weirdly shaped. Uh, we got one, two, three, all here coming out one side. This branch, yeah, it's kind of strange. I take that off. I leave this one. These two are in the same plane, so I'm taking that one out. Now I got one here, one there. Very nice. 
Um, let's see. Okay, actually, this one here, broken. This is why I say don't go looking for the perfect branch structure. You'll be making it, and it'll grow. And in some trees, apples have a tendency with the new branches come out rather horizontal, and that's good. But not every tree does that. Cherries, for instance, whoa, them shoots will go straight up off the side of the trunk. Very, very bad acute crotch angles on cherries most of the time. You have to cut the original branches off the tree because there are latent buds right below where you cut the branch off that will send the next branch out flatter. So pruning off an original branch will give you a flatter branch. Okay. Um, all right, that's pretty good there. Again, I'm going to prune this one right here, kind of below the vertical hook. Uh, this one here, I'm going to take it off right about here. There, okay. Next, we turn the tree over. Let's have a look underneath here. Mm, that one's broken. That's a goofy root. 90 degree angle. Yuck. That's it. Looks good. All right. So the next thing, we've got to get them in the pots. You don't want the root circling. If you have to twist the root to get it into the pot, cut it off. Honestly, don't circle the roots. That's one thing you don't want to start doing. All right, so the first thing we need in the bottom of the pot is a pile of potting soil because we don't want the tree all the way to the bottom. So, I'm going to take my bag here. And I'm going to dump some soil in here. There we go. All right, now I went maybe uh, eh, almost halfway, maybe a third. Yep, good. Yeah, that puts the graft to the tree right about the rim of the pot. That should be just fine. Okay. Now I'm going to begin adding some of this soil between the roots here. to get enough of it in this pot so that I can get the tree positioned vertical. And sometimes vertical is not vertical at ground level. There we go. Okay, this tree's got kind of a bow in it. All right. There we go. Now I will often do this while I'm planting bare root trees. The reason why? It helps shake soil down between the roots. So I kind of treat the tree like it's a plunger. <laughs> There you go. Okay. And. Alrighty, so you don't want too much soil in here. If the soil's too high, then you can't get water into the pot. You need uh, to be able to get water into this container. Uh, bringing the soil right about to that ring in the pot here is, is fine. Okay. And check again for verticality. This tree's got a bow in it. It's an organic thing. It's natural. It wants a curve. Straight lines. Straight lines are human. Curves are organic. All right, there we go. Now, uh, the next thing we want to do is that we'll need a little bit of fertilizer. Oftentimes I've heard people say, well, the potting soil was nice and black. I figured it was rich, you know, and no. Nah. Sorry. Not true. Potting soil most of the time has next to nothing in it as far as nutrients. If it has a nutrient package, it will say so. Okay. And so there will be on the label. So this has no nutrients in it whatsoever. It's just a compost and perlite. I'm using a time-release fertilizer here called Nutricoat 180. This is good for six months. I'm not going to put too much of it in here because Bruce will be planting this thing out in his field anyway. And so I'm just putting in enough to make sure there's something in here for the tree to grow on. He'll feed it when he gets it in the ground. I scratch it into the surface a little bit so it gets in contact with the soil. I am not putting it deep because if you put it too deep in the pot, it will run out the bottom okay without feeding the tree so you want it to be able to run through the root system alrighty there we got that one now let's take a look at the other one here and again same situation put some soil in the bottom of the pot 
never plant right to the bottom of a pot. If you're planting trees or anything, uh, make sure you got soil below. If you're planting uh, cuttings, that's very important. Never strike cuttings to the bottom of the container. You want something underneath. Okay. go. Let's see. Did I get too much? Did I get too little? I got a little too much. Okay, so this root is kind of flat side to side here, so I'm going to sort of dig a trench in the soil and lower the roots in here. There we go. That's good. Right there. When I'm doing this sort of work, planting a bare root tree in the field, um, I will usually drive a stake into the bottom of the hole first. The reason I do that is because then I'll tie the tree to the stake to keep it straight, and I'll uh, then work the soil in between the roots without collapsing them. You don't want the roots collapsing like an umbrella closing. This is not good. Okay. And so you want the roots in their natural formation, and you want the soil to work its way down in between those fine roots. You don't want air pockets either, okay? That right there is the graft line where the trees were put together. Rootstock down here, cyan wood up here, or variety root. Uh, this root is a dwarfing root, and so they have a specific type of a root on here that keeps the tree smaller. Okay, that's how you get dwarf trees in general. You don't want to bury this, because if you bury it, oftentimes the rootstock will rot, and then maybe, if you're lucky, roots will form on the trunk of the original plant, but then you'll lose your dwarf. It will become standard. It will be a full-size tree. Okay. Alrighty. Um, we need a little fertilizer in there. And you can use whatever kind of fertilizers you want. There are starter fertilizers that are high phosphorus. That's a real good idea. Most of us in the nursery usually use time release stuff like this. This way we got food that's going to come on in here for the next six months or so. Uh, but you can use an organic, you know. You can use a little bit of chicken manure mixed in with the potting soil or something on that order. It's not that specific. You just want to make sure you got some phosphorus in there for the roots to grow. All right, so now the next thing to do, and this is a really important one, you've got to get them wet. It's not just the getting them wet part, it's the uh, um, getting the soil settled. And use lots and lots of water. You want to really soak this down. You don't want any dry spots on the roots, you don't want any dry spots in the soil, and you don't want any air holes down there, okay? So if you put enough water into these pots to make sure that the water is flooding the soil particles down between the roots. That should do it. Not too hard. Basic things. Don't worry about the branch structure when you're picking out your bare root tree. Look at a well-heeled graft. It's got a nice union. The root system and its condition are more important than the branches on top. Make sure that the main trunk doesn't really have any significant damage in it. That's the issue right there. Okay. And, you know, a nice straight trunk is always a good thing. Uh, as far as the branches are concerned, if you can find trees that happen to have some pretty well-placed branches, it's great. But don't worry about it. As I said, I've, I've watched people go round and round and round for hours sometimes, trying to find the perfect tree. And then they'd bring it to me as the salesman. I'd look at it and go, oh, okay. Click, 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 click. And they go, what did you do? You know, I spent an hour looking for that tree. Yeah, well, it's not important. That is, the branches aren't important. The guy's feelings, yeah, that was important. Another story. Uh, anyway, so, uh, good roots, no damage to the trunk. Um, make sure that your trees have been soaked in water so that the roots are completely hydrated. You don't want a dry root when it goes into the pot. Um, use a little fertilizer in the container unless your potting soil states that it's embedded with nutrients, then you don't have to. But 
otherwise, even some of the ones that have the nutrient package, it's only good for about six weeks anyway. So you can feed them later after a month. But you know, trees in containers are going to need feeding. You know, you're not going to get by. And even if the potting soil looks black and rich, usually the stuff that's the blackest looking is the worst. It'll have a lot of reed peat and stuff sometimes. So make sure to feed. Make sure to soak the trees in well. Make sure that the root systems when you're planting do not collapse. If you're going into the field instead of a pot, drive that stake first. Tie that tree up to the stake in perfect position. Now, I have videos on this, so you can see this if you want to find it. So I'm not going to go into that part. Um, again, reasons why you might pot the tree. Maybe you haven't got any soil, so you grow it in a container. You want to look for the most dwarf plants in that case though and be ready to transplant a fruit tree every year because if you don't it's probably going to start to outgrow the pot you'll become root bound and you're not going to get anything good out of it and so the pot will have to increase in size it is possible after a while to go in prune the top of the tree back hard pull it out prune the root system and put it back into a smallish container by cutting everything back and allowing it to regrow if the tree is to be grown permanently in a patio container or something you're probably going to have to do that if it's only going in the container because you're waiting for your garden to get ready uh, or you're going to sell it later to somebody else or in my case you know these are for my friend Bruce uh, then you know, it, it's not going to be quite as important. You just get a container big enough to get the thing in there. Do not circle the roots. You buy a pot big enough to make sure they fit well. And trim the root system if you need to. Um, and so on. For most of it, folks, <laughs> happy bare root season. This is the time. For those of you in the cooler climates, you have time to think over this, and your nurseries in your area probably won't be putting the bare root trees out until the snow at least disappears and the frost starts to come out of the soil. Uh, those of you who live in milder areas, particularly California right now, we are actually in most of California approaching the end of the bare root season, so you're not going to find the stock that you would have found about a month ago. Okay, very important. It often depends on, you know, if, when the growers can dig and ship and so on. So there's some variation. But typically February is the end of the West Coast bare root season, at least in California. Go up to Washington, I suppose it extends a little later than that. Uh, in the Midwest, it probably doesn't even start till about March or April or some such thing like that, till you really get into spring. They keep the trees in refrigerators and things waiting for you uh, in that case. But it's the time. You will find the most varieties. You will have the least problems getting your plants to take, and so on and so on and so forth. So go bare root. Go bare root. Um, and, and, and don't let the broken branches hang loose. Aloha.